This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid MIDI Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial. And in this lesson, we're going to continue our look at editing music videos by talking about stylizing our footage inside of Avid Media Composer. Now, as editors, we're accustomed to taking shots that we might not think would work in the scope of an edit and fitting it in so that it looks like it was meant to be there all along. But there's certain situations where we get to shots where we think, oh, this shot is just completely unusable. There might be, you know, something that's in the shot that we don't want to be there and we'll immediately discard it. But in this lesson, I'm going to show you how we can take a shot that most editors would look at and say, well, you know what? I, this would not even go anywhere in our timeline and we're going to take it. We're going to stylize it. I'm going to show you how you can create inside of MIDI Composer only using tools at your disposal creating a very cool look very quickly and very easily that you'll be able to use in the scope of a music video or really inside of any project where you just want to get in and add a little flair to a shot that you might be working on. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And here is the shot that I'm talking about. Now, you'll remember in our previous lessons, in our look at cutting music videos, we were sticking with a lot of close-ups of the band playing. You know, we could see guitars and things like that, close-ups of the lead singer. But in this case, we have a shot of him seemingly to be in somebody's living room. Now, most people would take a look at this and immediately say, I can't use this. This looks terrible. You know, we don't want to use this because you can see TVs and all that type of stuff. We want to actually make it look like he's in a studio. But you know what, as soon as I look at this shot, I see a lot of potential. Now, again, everything I'm gonna show you can be done inside of Avid Media Composer, utilizing tools that you have at your disposal, whether you think you do or not. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do is I actually wanna get in, because you'll see that it looks like that we have some sort of a light that should be up above our singer's head. And so I'm actually gonna add that light. We're actually gonna do it using a lens flare effect. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Command and 8 on the Mac, Control and 8 on Windows to call up the effects palette. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna navigate up to the Boris Continuum Complete Plugin Package. And I know you're probably thinking, well, Kev, I didn't, I didn't buy the Boris Continuum Complete Plugin Pack. Well, if you're on the Media Composer subscription plan, you actually have access to BCC Lite, the uh, four effects, the three, the well, three filters, and the one transition effect that come with your subscription. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how you can use two of those to create that stylized look, again, included at no additional charge. Now, the first one that we're gonna use is Lens Flare 3D. What I'm gonna do is simply navigate to the Lights category, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna find Lens Flare 3D that's located right here. Again, completely free, included inside of BCC Lite. And I'm simply gonna take it and drag it and drop it into my timeline. Now I'm given the default Lens Flare, so the first thing that I wanna do is step into Effects Mode. Now of course, as you all know, my shortcut for Effects Mode, Shift and Y on the keyboard. If you don't have access to it, no problem. You can always again find it right here. Now, the first thing that I wanna do is not come up and go through all of the different presets here. What I want to do is I want to come into the FX browser. I'm simply going to click on Show FX Browser. We'll give the FX Browser just a second to load up here. And once it does, I'm going to find a lens flare that I think you know mimics a, an actual light that you might find that you know someone's hung, maybe if it's in a studio. And this was the one that I actually went with. It's called Bright Pop DD. Now there's a few little artifacts that are going on here that I think I'm gonna to wanna to get rid of, but overall I'm very happy with the way that this lens flare looks. So all I'm gonna do is simply say apply. Now of course at any time you can come through and click on any one of the other presets to get a visual representation of what the actual preset looks like. But what I'm gonna do is just select this one. I'm simply gonna say apply. Now again, like I said, few things that I wanna remove from here, and I'm just gonna zoom in on my shot a little bit here just so I get a little bit of a closer view on it. Now what I wanna do is I wanna remove the disks, I wanna remove the polygons, and I think that's about it, that is. And what we're gonna do is because we got a little bit of this light wrap going on around our singer's head, I'm simply gonna take the lens flare and I'm gonna place it up here at the edge of the frame just kind of like that. Now it actually looks like the light is almost literally right on top of him, maybe just slightly in front of him, casting this very cool shadow on the floor. 
Okay, so I'm happy with the way that this lens flare looks. I'm not going to do anything to animate it. I'm happy with the way that it looks. And what I'm going to do is simply close the effects editor because the next thing that I need to do is I need to get rid of all of this extraneous stuff that's in this shot because what I want to do is just have our singer isolated in the frame. Now, I'm going to use one of my favorite tools to do that with, and it's a tool that I think is completely underutilized inside of Avid Media Composer, and I'm talking about Animat. We can actually find that in the key section of the effects palette. I'm simply going to come down to the key section. You'll find it right here. And what I'm going to do is simply hold Option on the Mac, Alt on Windows to drag Animat down on top of Lens Flare 3D. Now, once it's there, this is where people get a little bit confused if you haven't actually used uh, Animat before, is they come in and they try to start doing stuff and nothing happens. They're like, well, I guess this doesn't work. And then they you know, get rid of it to go and do something else. What's important to keep in mind about Animat is the tools are actually located right here at the right hand side of the effects editor. You're going to notice I have the ability to create rectangles, circles or ovals. I can get in and create polygons as well as being able to get in and create curves and even paint with the Animat brush, which is very, very handy. Now, for the purposes of what we're doing, we're going to keep it simple, and I'm simply going to use the rectangle tool. Now, I also need to zoom back a little bit, and what I'm going to do is just draw a rectangle around the frame to about there. I think that's looking pretty good, okay? Now, what I want to do is get in and feather this. Now, I don't want to feather both values together like that. What I want to do is just separate the horizontal and vertical and we're just going to and actually let me just undo that here for a second let's just send everything back where we had it before all the way back to zero you'll see here we go we'll just undo this and there we go okay so let's just turn off fixed aspect let's just grab horizontal and let us stretch that out not too much you'll see that I can start to see the furniture here on the left so I'm just going to adjust the left border a little bit just to move that over to about there. I think that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the way that this looks. Now, a couple other things that you might want to do to this shot. Now, I can do this, you know, after the fact or I can do it before. Now, what I'm going to do here is actually just step in because what I want to do here first is I'm going to step in and I just want to actually make this background a little bit more black. It's not exactly black. It's sort of, sort of you know, a little bit of a grayish black. And I want to get in and make sure that this actually looks like he's standing in front of nothing, not in front of a psych wall. And what we're going to do is simply head up to Windows, and I'm going to come to Color Correction Mode. Now, we're not going to get too much into Color Correction Mode right now, because I'm going to do a dedicated tutorial specifically focusing on Color Correction. But what I want to do is simply inside of the Hue Offsets, over here on the right, you're going to notice that I have access to the Gain Controls, the Gamma Controls, or the Setup, which you know basically equates to the highlights, the midtones, or the shadows. And what I want to do is just crush down the blacks just a little bit like that. I want to bring the mids up. Let's just put this down maybe at like minus 20. Bring the mids up a little bit more, and we'll just bring the highlights up just a little bit. Kind of like that. So basically what we now have, if I step into the effect, is that was what the before was. You'll see, very washed out. And that is what the after looks like. Very nice. I'm just going to step out again so you can see it with the lens flare. I'm going to step out it one more time. And you can see that in most cases, people might be, you know, happy with the way that this looks. I've created a very stylized look that could conceivably stand on its own. Now, I think I'm going to do one more thing just to really give this its own stylized look. And this is something that I like to do all of the time. I like to get in, I like to colorize my shots. You know, basically suck all the color out of it. And, you know, a sepia tone is a good way to think about it because sepia tone is a very common technique that I see a lot of editors use. In this case, I'm not going to use sepia tone, but I'm going to show you how you could achieve that look if you wanted to. Now, again, I'm going to use another effect from BCC, of course, again, BCC Light, and I am talking about the Colorize effect. Okay, so let's head back to the Effects Palette, Command and 8 on the Mac, Control and 8 on Windows. Let's head back up to the BCC effects, and I'm going to be heading up to Color and Tone. And, of course, I am talking about Colorize that's located right here. Again, all I'm going to do, simply hold Option on the Mac, Alt on Windows. I'm going to take that effect, I'm going to drag it and drop it right down on top of Animat. I'm going to let it go, and you're going to notice that the whole screen has now turned a shade of blue. Now, you can also see that I can see, you know, now I can see a little bit of that furniture on both sides. So let me just step in and let me just fix that here, okay? Just because I want to make sure that we don't see any of that. And of course, again, it's just as simple as just bringing the edges of Animat in a little bit. 
just kind of like that. Let's just step out, see if that looks any better. I think that's much better. I can still see a little bit of the couch, but I'm okay with this because the camera pretty much stays locked off. Now, the only problem is, is that overall now, even the black looks a little bit blue, which is not really the effect that I wanted. I really only wanted to have my Singer be that color. So how do I get in and adjust that? Well, it's very simple. I'm going to, again, step into Effects Mode, Shift and Y. I'm going to come into the Colorize Parameters, and let's come right down here to the... You'll see that I'm actually working with Color 3. Color 3 is right there, that purple color. But what I want to adjust before I even talk about the colors is I want to adjust the black point a little bit. I want to make it a little bit darker. Now, I think I've actually gone and made it a little bit too dark. So maybe what I'm going to do is just make that value about a value of 5. Maybe even less than that, 2.5. Now you'll see that as soon as I made it 2.5, I started to get a little bit of that blue back in the black. So let's put it back at about four, and that will probably be good enough for the purposes of what we want to do here. Now you'll see that we've created a very cool and very stylized look. Now like I said, we could have let this shot stand on its own in color, just like that. But I like doing this. I like, you know, giving things a very stylistic look. And we talked about, you know, possibly even doing a sepia tone look. Well, the beauty of the colorize effect is that if I actually come back up to color three, I can twirl that value down. And now I can really make this whatever color I want. I could have it as black and white, or we could get in, sort of make it a little bit of a yellow color. I'll just undo that here. We could, of course, take green, add some green in there. And this is really how we could get in and identify, you know, maybe we always had the singer as blue, maybe we always had the drummer as sort of a yellowish color, you know, the guitar player as green. This is really a cool way to stylize each person, each individual in the music video as a different color to create a very cool look. Now, one thing that I also love about the BCC light effects is that if I wanted to, let's say hypothetically, while he was doing his little dance, which actually makes it look like he's playing a tambourine with his back to the camera, if I wanted to stick him on the left side of the frame and maybe put something in on the right side of the frame, believe it or not, that is super simple to do. All we need to do is simply come all the way down to the bottom of the effect into the geometric section right there. I'm simply going to grab the X point and we're just going to drag it over like that. Now, of course, we can see the edge of the frame a little bit here. And of course, that's because if I scroll back up here, I didn't make my black point dark enough. And you can see the more we make it dark, we'll immediately lose that edge of the frame. And of course, that's all just a matter of about finding the happy medium in there. That's about 7.5. And I think that looks pretty good. I can't see that anymore. Okay. Now, because I've got about four effects, four or five effects stacked up on top of each other, what we're going to do is just give this a really quick render here. And when the render is done, I'm simply going to play and you're going to see that no longer is our singer inside of a living room. It actually looks like he's in a real studio singing to a track that can be dropped into the music video that you're working on right away with this very cool and very stylistic look. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor, Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase, including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.